It was so frustrating yesterday with all those people around. Well, we're alone now. Yes. Do you mind if we walk? I feel so awkward just standing here like this. I expect you know what it is I want to talk to you about. Not exactly. I want to talk about us. About our friendship, you mean? If you want to call it that. Well, that's what your mother calls it. At least to me, your friendship with Franklin, she always says. Not that I mind. I, I, I believe we are friends, wonderful friends. And if Cousin Sally has decided that we've been seeing more of each other than she thinks proper, then I understand perfectly. And you needn't look so solemn about it. To tell you the truth, I've been expecting it for some time. When your letter came, I was almost certain that was the dreadfully important thing you had to tell me. And I so wanted to write back and say, please, please don't be unhappy about it, because I quite understand. I honestly do. You thought I wanted to say goodbye to you. Not goodbye, exactly. Eleanor, I don't believe this. We just can't be this far apart in our feelings. It doesn't seem possible that you've been preparing yourself for some kind of farewell address. Well, I've been trying to work up nerve enough to tell you that I love you. Eleanor? 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 Eleanor, what's wrong? If that's your way of teasing, it's a very cruel way. Teasing? I've never been more in earnest in my life. What do you think I've been leading up to all these months? All these months, exactly. In all these months, meeting in the country, in the city, going to church together, in the theater together, going to museums and galleries, having lunch together and tea together and dinner together, talking about everything under the sun. You've never once broached the subject of love, and you know it. Because I couldn't. Because I didn't know how. I'm not a Don Juan, as it happens. I can't fall back on my experience, my suave technique. No, no, I just have to blurt it out like a roaring maniac right here in the middle of the Groton campus. Shouting. Of course I'm shouting. Haven't you been listening? That's just what I said. You can't possibly love me. I beg your pardon? You heard what I said? Well, say it again. I said you can't possibly love me. Well, why not? You just can't. Is that an order or an edict or what? It simply isn't possible. You keep saying that, and I want to know why. Why can't I love you? Is there some reason I don't know about? Oh, you know the reason. You say you're no Don Juan, and perhaps you're not. Perhaps But if I'm... you're honest, you'll admit there were lots of girls you flirted with before I came along, and several others since. Flirted? Yes, I don't deny that. Now, just this past year alone, I could name five, six girls who've had their caps set for you. I'm sure you could name even more. Beautiful girls, really beautiful. But I, I can't think of it. I can't think of any more than two or three, if it comes to that. And even if I could, even if I could name 50, what of it? What of it? Yes, what of it? Compared to you, they all seem so trivial and vain. They seem little better than morons compared to you. Well, why won't you believe me when I tell you that it's you I want? Well? Well, what? You know what? I don't. You do? Why must you keep me floundering like this? What else have I been doing for the past five minutes except asking you to marry me? Marry you? You know perfectly well that's what I've been doing. I don't. I don't know anything of the sort. You haven't spoken one solitary word to me about marriage. Not now, not yesterday, nor any time in the past. The devil I haven't. Franklin. Well, d Well, damn it, you do try a man's patience. Everything I've ever said to you about my ambitions, about my hopes for the future, about my feeling that I might amount to something someday if I had the right woman to help me, all of that, every bit of it was a way of talking about marriage. I thought you understood that. It was all leading up to a certain moment, and now that the moment has arrived, you might try to be a little more sympathetic. You might try to understand that it's quite difficult enough without all these interruptions and objections and all this resistance. I'm sorry. Just exactly what is it you expect, anyway? I don't expect anything. 
A really traditional, formal, straightforward, proper proposal, is that it? All right. All right, if that's what you want, then that's what you shall have. Well, don't look away. Your eyes are the only way I have of knowing what you think, what you feel. That's why I look away. Miss Roosevelt? Miss Roosevelt. Mr. Roosevelt has the honor of asking you to become Mrs. Roosevelt. If you can't think of any other reason for saying yes, I urge you to consider your writing paper. My writing paper? Your writing paper, your luggage, anything that has your name or your initials on it. If you took me, at the very least, you wouldn't have to replace any of those things. Think of the saving. Well? Oh, Franklin, do you want me? Do you really want me? Look in my eyes. No, but truly, you must... Shh. Mr. Roosevelt, on behalf of her writing paper and her luggage, Miss Roosevelt is pleased, is very pleased, to say yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 